My Life is the Autobiography of the British Fascist Leader Sir Oswald Mosley. It was published in 1968. Topic. Release The book was published in 1968. To coincide with the release of the book, the BBC broadcast a panorama special, seen by a record audience. The book was later released in the United States. Promotion included Mosley and his wife Diana's appearing on Good Morning America in support of the book. Topic. Topics, themes and treatment The book is structured as a sequential memoir, but it doubles as the author's personal defense against charges of antisemitism, as well as a general overview of world politics, both during his youthful ascent, and at the time of its publication in the 1960s. My Life provides a close-up view of England's ruling class from an immensely rich man born into long-established nobility, and married to the daughter of Lord Curzon. Mosley is able to chronicle the sumptuous social life of the elite, and there are vivid impressions of political figures across the spectrum from Churchill and Asquith to Bernard Shaw and James Maxton, and some of the top Nazis, though he tries to distance himself from Hitler. As a frequent cross-bencher, Mosley naturally provokes some of the what-if theories of history, such as the prospect of Prime Minister Mosley working with the pro-Mussolini King Edward VIII. His memoirs earned much praise, not only from political friends but from enemies too, as well as large numbers whose view of Mosley as a mere rabble-rouser would be much redrawn by the mature philosophy and scholarly writing shown here. Reception Commercially the book was a success, becoming a bestseller. Mosley's wife Diana Mosley, provided samples of critical reviews in her own autobiography A Life of Contrasts. Mosley is a superb political thinker, the best of our age. A. J. P. Taylor. The only living Englishman who could perfectly well have been either Conservative or Labour Prime Minister. Malcolm Muggeridge. He displays yet another talent, for it is the best written volume of memoirs emanating from my generation. Sir Colin Coote. In the field of ideas he was a creative force. Lord Longford. We are confronted by a man of powerful will and bold intelligence, self-disciplined, by no means lacking in shrewdness or even humor, a spell-binding speaker, a truly formidable figure. Colin Welch, Daily Mail. Memorable and important pieces of writing. Christopher Sykes. 